Introduction to the Tower, the 2010 assignment. Now you see here that it's got contents, then it's got PowerPoint, color, underlining, pictures, fonts, summary. Okay. Now what are you seeing as being the basis, the basics of PowerPoint? What's it all about? I'm saying tell them what you're going to tell them. Then tell them then tell them what you told them. Okay, what about colour? Well there are two sorts of colours. There are printed colours cyan, yellow, magenta, black and then there are projected colours red, green, blue. Now I was saying that all newspapers start off with CMYK. Yeah? This is the idea of a printed thing. CMYK. Black. On printing. So modern colour printed paper. You'll see. Look down the spine of the newspaper and you'll see these four colours there. You'll actually see the letters C What's that? Cyan. Magenta. You won't see the Y because it'll look so so light. But you'll see the K for black. Now projected colour. There's projected colour. Put down a light. Project the colour through it. This is the thing that's almost unbelievable. Red and green make projected yellow. Red and blue projected pink, purple. Green and blue make, well, looks like cyan. But then look at the three colours projected together. I find that pretty amazing. Okay, underlining. Never underline because it cuts through the J, the Y, the G, the P and the Q. The descending parts of those. If you want to see where it's happening, look at this on the hyperlink. The Y and the P are cut through. Now ways of avoiding this are always do capital letters when you're underlining. Trouble is that that looks too big at times. And the other one is to half underline, like this. This is how they do it in newspapers at times. Now, I looked down at the hyperlink there and talked about the exception. If it's a hyperlink, it's going to be underlined like this. It's going to cut through. Get used to that. Pictures and key lines. Old Chinese proverb, one picture is worth a thousand words. Right, okay. Now, key lines are there to make the picture stand out from the page. Look at the two pictures. You've got the picture here that looks as if it's pushed out from the page. That's what the newspapers do. And then you've got the picture there. No key line seems to me something's missing. Alright, fonts. Only use two fonts on a piece of work. More than two fonts looks like a ransom note. There's one font, Arial. There's another one. This is Papyrus. Now if you've seen Jack Barnet 21, then this is the font that's used for it. Arial is the second font that's used there. 
Okay. Now what is it you told people to do? Tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, then tell them what you told them. Now here is the summary. What did you tell them? You told them the contents, which were PowerPoint, what was it all about, colour, underlining, pictures and fonts. Right. So now this, is, this has been where I told you what I was going to tell you. Now what is it that I've got here? When you look all around, there's the slide in the middle, here are some notes, and this is the area in which you are to write any notes in this assignment. Let me move that and make these um, slides much smaller. I'll now move up to the top here. OK, I'm going to the first slide there. Now when I talked about presentations, PowerPoint presentations, the first thing I want you to know is that if you're going to have a background like this, you need to go to View, Master, Slide Master. In Slide Master, what I did was to take a picture. Now let me first of all show you what the picture looked like. There was the picture. It's much too dark to be the picture in the background of your presentation. So what you need to do is to go to the picture menu and if you don't see it you can come up here press the right hand mouse and bring the picture menu down let's see if we can do it now you click onto the picture ouch click onto the picture and then the picture menu will descend so here's the picture menu now if you look here it's got this color thing here if I click onto that I can change the background picture to a grey scale, mm. a black and white, I can change it to a washout. OK. But I could change it back to automatic and then go to these things here and say, all right, well, let's make it brighter. Now, if I take my picture there and make my picture, see I'm making my picture brighter and disappearing into the background. OK. Now the next thing I want to do here is to click onto my font there. OK. Now what am I saying with my font? If I go to my custom animation, I can say how I want my font to appear on there. All right. If I play that, you've seen two things there. One, how the font comes on the screen. And all I've done is to suggest that the the title font should come on, all right, should fly in from the right at medium speed. Now if I wanted the, the second font, all right, the body text font to come in, I'd go into Add an Effect, Entrance. Let's make that fly in as well and I'm suggesting that, that should come in from the bottom of the screen if I click onto there and say alright after previous and let's have it coming on medium so now if I play that here I've got it as I change my slide there's the master text the title text coming on and there's the body text coming up. Now while I'm up here I'll go here down to transition. Transition 
is how the slide comes onto the screen. I'm in the master view. I'm saying, OK, let's have the slide come on. Box in. There it is. Can you hear that slight noise? It's a sort of breeze that I've got there. I could go for camera. No. It didn't like that, so I've got a slight breeze and I'll let that happen. I put in there on mouse clip click, but I could change it here and take off that. Now if I do that, my whole presentation will run through without me having to type to touch the mouse. If I click onto there and say to all apply to all slides. Okay, now I've come out of there. That's the first thing. Now, is there anything else I want to look at? Now I could look down here at the notes area. These are the, the slide area. These are the various things I want to do to my slides. Let's have a look here. If I go here, I can say slide layout. And I can choose one of these slides for each of the particular slides. Contents layout. If I choose one of these, then I've got the chart there, or I've got pictures there. OK, so I could choose one of those, click onto that and bring that to the screen and then choose pictures from there. Or I've got a title slide there. I've got a slide with only a title area, nothing else on it. I've got a totally blank slide there. And then I've got slides with bullet points, two lots of columns. So I've got various things that I can set my new slides up at. If I put my cursor over there and press Control M, I can get a new slide up straight away. Now let's have a look at background slide design templates. Now I actually showed you my putting in a background picture, but I could have chosen these things. I won't click on any because it will immediately change this one here, and I quite like this one that I've just done. But you could try, try some of these for your presentation. This will give you a background already printed. Anything else? Well, if I go down here, you can see all of my slides, and I can move them around. I could move that one to there, except that this one is the contents, and that tells what I'm going to talk about, so I won't move that around. But you get the idea. I can move things around in here. Let's go back to my previous view by coming down to the bottom here and going to my normal view here. Let's have a look at what it's going to look if I go to View and Notes page. Now there's my Notes page. And if I want to, I can increase my notes down there. Look at that. You need to have contents on your presentation. These let people know what is going on in that presentation. Now what did I do here? I moved that across because I wanted plenty of room for my notes at the bottom here. I also moved my page number there. Alright, so I'm going to move that back over to where I had it before. If I want to move my page number or do things there, then I go to View, Master, Notes Master. Then I could pick that up and take it back to where it was. I'm going to Control Z and move that. Now this area here is the Notes area. In preparation for a presentation. Right, now there's the notes view. Okay, let's go back over here for a moment. 
and I'm going to change back into normal view. Back over here I've got slide, slide layout, slide design, slide color schemes, animation schemes, custom animation and transition. Those are the various things that you need to think about in your presentation. OK. I'm just going to let that go back and now I'm going to move back into my slide presentation. Here I go. If I go now and press F5 that will start my presentation. And there. It's now going through step by step automatically without me a actually having to touch the button. So there is the contents. Followed by my summary. Tell them what you're going to tell them. Then tell them. Then tell them what you told them. Printed and projected colours. Please excuse the American spelling of colours. It's colours in America and colour in England. Now look at these, these different colour schemes there. I'm sorry that they're dashing through so quickly. If I were giving this presentation, then I think I would obviously slow it down somewhat. Pictures and key lines. One picture is worth a thousand words. Fonts. Only use two fonts on a piece of work. Now why is it appearing to go through f twice? Because having set up my, my fonts first of all, I then went and, and looked at a, a second way of doing things in order to give an explanation. Not to worry. And there's colour spelt in the English way.